Uh, this is a joy. Joining us now, David Bonson, as we get ready, Ira Jersey to be along uh, in a bit, and we're glad that Mr. Bonson's with us to talk about, okay, wealth management, your head is spinning. You need to be in the market. Uh, and, and how do you approach this? David, you've been doing this for years. How many people feel like they haven't participated? Or does everybody own NVIDIA? Which is it? <laughs> Oh, it's a, that's a good question. I think that there are people who get out of the market altogether and, and then have a very difficult time getting back in. Agree. Uh, those that are in the market, uh, if they're not clients of ours, they probably do own NVIDIA because they own the index. So many today have become sort of model portfolio index investors. It's not what we do at all. It's not what I believe in. But the, the cap-weighted so, indices are loaded up with that. This is critical now. Active, passive, and some people are taking a blended mix. So they got an index yeah. approach, and they're overlaying active on it. What's the Bonson method? Uh, dividend growth, actively managed, concentration, conviction. We do not want to buy a multiple expansion. Okay. That is, to me, the entire thesis of index investing Sweeney, right now. Sweeney's, Paul Sweeney, I wish he was here. Yeah. Do you know where he is? I, I do know He's at the land of the $86 stake. I mean, that's where, <laughs> that's where he is. He's out west. Paul says Apple's irresponsible that they haven't joined the dividend growth mantra. Do you agree? Yes, and we sold it for that reason uh, very much. It uh, is a ridiculous amount of capital to be dead, to not be working. Um, it also facilitates them doing uh, bad things, setting money on fire, like putting $8 billion into a car effort that they get rid of 10 years later. The, the advantage Apple has is that they don't care about $8 billion. Most, most companies don't have that luxury. They spent, I think it was two or $3 billion on Dr. Dre's headphone company. It wasn't worth <laughs> $800 million soaking wet. That's the kind of stuff you do when you're not returning capital to shareholders. Apple should be one of the biggest Can dividend just, growers. So, this is this is Mario Gabelli. Well, I mean, I mean, you gotta I mean, you gotta David's help me out here. I mean, David, how easy yeah. is it for you to tell a high net worth individual here in the U.S. that they should be buying Saudi Aramco? I mean, you want to talk about dividend payers? How easy is that conversation to have? Well, it isn't one that we own, and the, there's going to be other reasons people would be kind of turned off to that name, but some of the big energy names, the Exxons and Chevrons that we've owned forever have been wonderful stories to tell. People are quite grateful we've loaded up on those. So it, it, you, And that's the fun thing, too, is we, when you own 30 companies, you get to talk about the companies. You don't have to talk about the market. The market trades off of P.E., that's it. Yeah. And and we are interested in businesses. Well, PE, I mean, ha, ha, I mean the recent move it's not due to earnings growth, it's been to val it's in multiple expansion, but let's take let's take a step back. I mean, Tom knows I cut my teeth in private client services at Lehman Brothers and you know the conversations you have with clients is tends to revolve around broad asset allocation, not just equities, not just bonds, but you have to talk about both. What what are you talking mostly with with your investors? Are they more interested in the fixed income side of their portfolio with yields at current levels, or are they trying to find value in dividends in the equity market? Look, we run a little over $5 billion, and I think we're maybe at half a billion in fixed income total, and that's tax-free and taxable, and this is a high net worth practice. Yeah. Uh, fixed income is about 10% of our business. It's not a big conversation. It's a asset class you sort of have to have, but it isn't a core part of what we're doing. We're doing a lot in privates. We're doing a lot in alternatives, and there's good opportunity there but dividend growth is uh about 60 percent of our business it has been for 25 years you hinted at tax efficiency and how important that is to investors specifically here in the u.s yeah. and i think about the eaton vance and these these funds that are out there these actively managed funds i mean look active management has been sucking wind of late david as we all know this move to passive to etfs but on the active side it's this tax efficient you know kind of way to run a portfolio talk to us a little bit about that how do you preach tax efficiency how do you integrate that into your clients portfolios the first thing we say is that we value tax efficiency the second <laughs> thing we say is that the tax tail will not wag the investment dog and the third thing we do is use active management to do tax loss harvesting where we tax can loss harvesting. and we don't obsess over harvesting. it we don't we don't obsess but when you have 30 individual positions it's very rare that 30 out okay. of 30 will that's be where up. i'm gonna go i i'm loving this by the way i was way <laughs> out front I didn't invent it. Let's get, give a moment of silence to Sequoia. And years ago, jo, jo, I think it was Joe Mircino at the Fidelity 50 Fund. Explain to people yes. over diversified the well, advantage of 23 or 30 yeah. or 37 holdings yeah. versus 300. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, basically, there is absolutely no statistical evidence that the diversification benefits increase as holdings increase above roughly 30 or 40 names. I, folks, what you just heard there is religion. Yeah. I can only say it. you got to concentrate. But where I disagree with some of this, not with you, uh, not, not, not in any way with you, but what, what I disagree with is, is then sell your winters. Where's Benson on rebalancing? How do you rebalance out of winners? Uh, we rebalance once a year uh, wow. just as a peer risk management approach. And we tell people constantly that we expect to lose money doing it, yeah. that we do not believe it is going to uh, increase returns as much as it's going to mitigate <clears throat> risk. You know, we, we own Broadcom. It's only a one and a half percent weighting and we trimmed it last week and then it fell, I think, seven percent on Friday. And we got emails over the weekend saying, wow, that was brilliant timing. It wasn't timing. Most of the right. time we expect things to go What's higher. What's your after portfolio turnover in 30 stocks? Very low. Very oh, well. come on, give me a note. Um, nobody's listening. There will be about two names a year on average that get sold that we eliminate entirely. Okay. So the total uh, turnover ends up being somewhere around okay. 13%. Damien, step in here. I'm taking notes. Well, I want to I want to talk about the concept of tax loss harvesting because this has become so important to, to many of these high net worth individuals who are carrying all these gains. You know, what's the approach? Explain to our audience, how do you harvest tax losses and why do you want to do it? All right, so what some people do is what we don't do, which is constantly obsess over finding a name that's down and selling it in the middle of the year to buy it back 30 days later. That's what right. we do is we, if we own a name, it means we want to own it. So we own it as long as we can. And then December 1st comes, and we go, we got 30 days. We're going to sell right. the ones that are down, and we're going to buy them back 30 days later if we still like the name, which there's okay. always a couple names that might be down. Newport Beach. San Diego Padres or the Pacific Rim Dodgers? Which are you rooting It's actually more the Angels for Newport really? Beach people. Yeah, because they're, they're in Orange Angels, County. They got nobody left. Yeah, they, they got, got nobody Trump left. I mean, I feel bad well, you know, Trout's been a pretty good player. They haven't been good in 22 years, but thanks for bringing it up. Do you think the <laughs> Disneyland expansion's going to work? No, I do not. I mean, it's like a struggle. I mean, it's it's our childhood memories. Yeah, it's a it's that, a real but, shame the rest of the country doesn't get to know what we know about the city of Anaheim, one of the most dysfunctional cities in America. I've heard this. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, the, the things I can tell you right now, I'd rather tell you off air. <laughs> okay, we'll do a lot, that a lot of air. political. Sounds like a kid from Long Beach. David, don't be a stranger, Bonson. What he does, he gets on the golf stream and he's like back and forth, uh, East Coast, West Coast. It's Carries like his long kind of, board. That kind of life, you know. It's and he's not doing two and twenty. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, he's what's great here is he's you know making sun-kissed up skin. A, you know, a two, did you have a good year last year? Uh, we did, we did. Now, two, when you were talking about active management, 2022, S&P down 18, dividend growth, our portfolio is up seven. It's going to take a decade for the index to catch up. Yeah. So I, don't, I think that active management generally okay. does better when the Fed isn't at zero and you don't have a 13-year bull market when multiples go from 13 to 22. Right. It's not going to repeat itself. David, thank you so much. David Bonson with us.